What's up, Sim Racers? This is Larry TJR Sim here, and today I just want to go over uh, Forza Motorsports. Just getting some updates here on uh, you know coming in March that is. So let me switch on over to the uh, display capture right here, so you can see it. But um, it has some really good updates now. Uh, I don't know if you you know if you st keep up with Forza, but I'm going to try to create a a new episode every month here uh, going forward. To cover some updates maybe there are a little bit of in-game updates with like say forza motorsports uh, although this will be a separate video but uh and then others is, is like new products that's coming out uh as well so i'm going to try to do that around the half uh, half part of the, each month on the weekend or something uh to try to just add some value to you uh you know thank you for coming to the channel and checking things out and you know not everybody has time to look you know i don't always have time to look around what's all new and stuff so but I think it would be interesting to to look at new products that are coming and uh, give you my opinions of them. And uh, especially for it's for new people that are getting into sim racing, I uh, love seeing new people getting into sim racing and and, and having a uh, fun hobby to do. That's uh, that's um, yeah, that's just that you can break the bank on, <laughs> uh, but you can also keep it in under control and just have a freaking blast doing it, like you. Like you did in the early days playing these games, right? So in between. But today we'll just cover some Forza Motorsports uh, car progression updates that they have coming here in March. And so I really like to see this. Um, you know, I think Forza is uh, Motorsports is actually a really fun game. Uh, and I also love Gran Turismo uh, 7 as well. Uh, but for this one, uh, Forza for me is actually a little bit more fun than, say, Gran Turismo because I have a box system that works with Forza Motorsports. So it it's a game changer on how this game actually feels out on track. And so everything, you know, when you have your steering wheel and, and you want to feel your, uh, <laughs> you know, you're chattering your front tires. And when you're, when you're pushing, you know, or when you're understeering or oversteering, all this effects that you feel on your actual wheel uh, that you want, you're actually feeling through the chassis. So um, really commutative uh, with, with uh, motion system. Now I wouldn't recommend people to, buy a motion system just for say this particular game or not but if you are buying it for most of your, all your other pc racing games huh, why not add more to that roster right so but anyway so but getting back on this one caught off on a tangent there yeah so we're, we're gonna have car progression mechanics uh on here and what this is gonna do is gonna equip all the parts for the car uh right in the beginning so you may start off with say uh car progression one uh, and then uh, you start off with a certain amount of credits, usually like three or 400 credits uh, to to use on your car. But in this case, what they're gonna do is they're gonna give you a choice of all of the available parts out there. So you can get you know your flywheels, you can get your, uh, your drivetrains, you can get your body kit if it offers one, engine swaps, turbos, on and on and on. <laughs> and I think that appeases some people in the beginning, but I don't think people are really thinking about the bigger issue here of you painting yourself into the corner uh, because you're going to only start off with 300 credits or 400 credits to begin with at park car progression one. They really need to up the credits, at least triple the credits for, for the very first start of it because the most effective item that you would buy for your car to get around on a track more safely, uh, you're, you're, in a, you're in a video game, but you know, more accurately on the track and hold your line would be tires. Well, tires cost usually 700 credits uh, to a thousand, right? And this is not even the race tires. This is just the first level of tires. Uh, so <laughs> you're still gonna have a grind, you know? So you still got a few races uh, to do to get 700 credits. So then what are you gonna do? Well, we come to the second part of this uh, of this scenario of what they're gonna end up doing for car for car leveling. So you're gonna be able to use, uh, transfer your, your uh, in-game credits uh, to acquire car points. And so they're gonna have, uh, see they're testing a ratio of 4,500 credits for 500 car points. So $4,500 worth of credits as you would use for buying a car, uh, it, you can transfer into 500 car points. So I think this is gonna paint yourself into a corner very fast uh, because you're gonna start running out of car credits and money and then you're gonna be pissed off that you can't buy the car you wanna get, and you're gonna to have to grind to get more credits and more money uh, to be able to buy the next best thing that you that you wanna start developing, right? So, um, 
yeah, you can't make everybody happy on, on this scenario. So unless you just unlocked every car to be free, say like Project Cars 2 does, um, yeah, you would, uh, it would actually almost be a better system, I think. I'd have every car absolutely free to, free to buy uh, and, um, and then just use car progression points to up your, you know, if you drive the car more, you have more, more uh, car points and, you know, just like it is kind of now, right? Uh, but since they're doing it like this, this is fine uh, because it gives you a purpose, you know, that after all the purpose of the game is to drive the cars and have fun. Myself, I like car points because I don't use my my credits that I would use to buy another car for it. And plus with the car points, I can swap items in and out. So, you know, maybe headers aren't really doing anything for me, but I have enough leftover points if I trade in my headers and cold air intake that I can actually buy some tires now after say three different races, right? And that's kind of what I end up doing. Um, but yeah, you should at least, very minimum, you should start off with say 700 credits, not 300 credits or 400 credits. Give you enough money to at least buy a set of tires that you can uh, place higher in the race on, uh, depending on your difficulty level that you actually play on. But uh, something that you can actually do something with uh, to have more fun with the vehicle off the back. Some of these, some of these things are, some of these cars off the bat are like driving a car on roller skates. You know, they, it's just slick as hell. Uh, but you know, it is fun. I find a lot of fun in the progression of honing this car to my normal uh, way. I like to drive uh, any particular car. You know, maybe I like a tail happy car, but you like a car that has a lot of understeer because most road cars that you buy actually are purposely built with a lot of understeer in it because it's supposed to kind of scare you that you're going too fast and uh, make you slow yourself down to be safer on the road, right? Uh, where race cars aren't really built like that. Uh, but so that's a natural, a natural thing to, uh, to, uh, for people, you know, some people may like a lot of understeer and they don't want it to be tail happy and stuff. Others don't, but this will at least allow you to be able to upgrade some parts and stuff along the way quicker. But again, they need to give you more car points right off the bat so you can kind of do what you want to do. So it's still not so much of a grind. Uh, cause after all, there's a lot of cars there to, to uh, go through and, I end up, you know, modifying a lot of cars to max them out in a certain class. And uh, you got to keep in mind, you know, you can max out a, a, an A-class car and uh, or max out a car to A-class and it does really good in A-class. But then you go up to S-class and you're just getting stomped on because just the frame is not there for that particular car to to handle any better, even though you have every possible mod on there, right? So it's all speed and no traction doesn't get you anywhere, right? Uh, so, you know, you got to keep some <laughs> uh, perspective on, on what car can really go to what level, right? Uh, but so, yeah, I, I like the freedom that they're giving everybody. So this is that part is awesome. Uh, I think the the next step uh, for this would would be to uh, improve AI then after this, and then also uh, the the penalty system. Those two systems are horrible. Uh, AI, I think the first. First couple weeks, maybe I was just, you know, uh, giddy about playing the game and having fun and actually having a, a Forza uh, that actually handled good. And by the way, if you need some tips on how to make it handle good with a direct drive wheel, because I'm using AccuForce wheel, uh, but they're all going to be pretty close. Check out the video I have and that'll go over uh, some optimal settings for you to be able to handle your, your car more effectively. So again, for direct drive wheels. Uh, I'll just cover one last thing: the discounts uh, for the showroom discounts for your for your cars, your brand loyalty. Basically, it's still five percent. They're keeping that the same and going up to twenty five percent. So basically, you got between two to three hours to level up each car to say level fifty. Now, <laughs> now some people may not like that two or three hours of gameplay, but I mean, I can zip through three hours like that uh, in a in a day. <laughs> Uh, just random playing and stuff so but after all you're playing the game to have fun with the cars right so uh but yeah that's 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 kind of the gist of it all but let me know what you think about it uh is this gonna be a good start you know for for you to maybe jump back into forza motorsports uh maybe you're pissed off about it and you didn't want to play it because it was taking too much of a grind or, or were you happy with the system that was already there? So comment below and let me know. And also, let me know what your favorite oldie car is on there. Let's say from like 
Mm, 80s back. You know, what was your favorite car to actually drive? I have a lot of them. Um, this is like, like a 93, uh, well, I said 80s back, right? Mm, man. Yeah, there's so many, actually. So, yeah, let's just start with 80s back. Uh, but yeah, yeah, tell me, tell me what your favorite, favorite car is, uh, in, in those different eras and stuff. I'd be interested to try them out just to learn, you know, uh, some of y'all's favorite cars and then let me go out on the track and try to hone it a little bit and, uh, hone it to my liking and see if I like it as much. So, but all right, well, um, that's it for now. And, uh, yeah, give me your, give me your comments below and yeah, we'll see you on the track next time. Hope you enjoy this episode. I'm out.